This is the 200,000 km long network of gas pipelines sprawling across Europe like a spider web. A vast system of pipelines brings Russian gas into Europe, like the Yamal pipeline bringing gas through Belarus into Poland and Germany. With the cost of natural gas skyrocketing since the invasion of Ukraine, many people are wondering whether this could be the coldest winter of our lifetime. If you look at this chart from 2019, you'll see where EU countries get their heat from in the winter. It's clear that natural gas is by far the leading source of heat. In fact, residential heating is the leading use of gas in Europe at over 40% of all gas used in the EU. While natural gas is certainly not a good choice for the climate, there is a more immediate problem with this fuel source, where it comes from. See, Europe imports 80% of the gas it uses and the leading source of this gas has been Russia which represented 41% of Europe's natural gas imports last year. Countries near Russia have long enjoyed favorable rates on Russian gas. This is why Hungary is the most dependent on Russian gas, followed closely by Slovakia and Czechia. Since these countries are landlocked, they can't easily import liquefied natural gas, otherwise known as LNG, from ships to replace Russian gas, which is something other European countries have resorted to. But it might surprise you to learn that Germany is also heavily dependent on Russian gas. Since 2011, the country has pumped natural gas 1200 kilometers directly from Russia to Germany through the Nord Stream pipeline under the Baltic Sea. What's weird is that soon after signing the deal for Nord Stream, German Chancellor Gerhard Schröder left office and soon became a chairman of Gazprom, Russia's state-owned gas company. In fact, he still makes nearly a million dollars a year from his ties to Russian energy companies. From the moment the Nord Stream deal was signed, Germany's dependence on Russian gas was basically set in stone. Schröder's successor, Angela Merkel, continued policies favoring Russian gas. Today, Germany uses this gas for heating, but also for power generation and industry. Industry uses 35% of gas in Germany, nearly as much as residential uses. The German pharmaceutical and chemical industries alone use 27% of the country's gas. This means that any attempt to slow natural gas consumption will have serious side effects for the German economy. However, just like governments are rapidly adjusting to the energy crisis, so are the people whose wealth is at risk. A study last year by Ernst & Young into the investment practices of the very wealthy found that 8 in 10 ultra high net worth individuals are already investing outside of stocks and into alternative assets like contemporary art. The New York Times writes, quote, when stock markets take a dive, people look to invest in art because the contemporary art market has a near zero correlation to stocks and its appreciation has outpaced the S&P 500 return for the last 26 years by more than double. Masterworks deals specifically in this same contemporary art and as a result, they're dealing with more demand than ever, allowing you to invest in actual physical paintings from world-renowned artists like Picasso and Banksy for a fraction of the full price. Then, when Masterworks resells a painting you're invested in, you get a share of the potential profits. So far, they've sold six paintings for an average net return of 29% to their investors. And they've done so well, there's even a waitlist to join their over 500,000 members. But you can skip it today by just clicking the link in the description. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. While they enjoyed cheap Russian gas for the past 20 years, German industry is now paying the price for ignoring the risks. As of this summer, Germany was paying 1.8 billion euros a month to Russia for gas, oil and coal, money that is funding Russia's war in Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin is using natural resources as a geopolitical bargaining chip. This is why ever since Russia began its war in Ukraine, there has been anxiety that Europe won't have enough gas to heat homes this winter. Russia has been reducing gas flows to Europe, cutting deliveries through Nord Stream 1 by 75% in June and shutting it down entirely since the end of August. At the end of September, a huge explosion in the pipeline started leaking gas into the Baltic Sea. Ursula von der Leyen, the head of the European Commission, claims that the pipeline was probably sabotaged. While we don't know for sure, it makes sense that Putin would sabotage the pipeline to put pressure on European solidarity with Ukraine. Especially as Europe could face high natural gas prices and trouble with heating this winter. But the reality of Europe's energy situation is more complex. 
First, not all countries are equally dependent on Russia. For example, France usually generates about 70% of its energy from nuclear power. But this year, France's nuclear plants aren't producing enough power due to the unexpected maintenance issues, which may not be resolved until 2024. France's national electricity provider recently said that rolling blackouts were likely unavoidable even in a mild winter. This situation has led France and Germany to agree to swap gas and electricity, but it probably won't be enough, since France is only sending less than 2% of Germany's daily gas needs. So this winter, we may see countries deploy floating power stations called power ships, which can quickly add capacity to a country's electric grid with fossil fuel power plants. Another factor to consider is while Russia is Europe's largest gas supplier, it isn't the only supplier of Europe's annual 400 billion cubic meter gas demand. Norway and Algeria are other major gas suppliers to Europe and are both ramping up imports to the EU. Not to mention a massive natural gas field in the Netherlands that could replace up to half of Germany's gas imports from Russia, if it weren't slated to close in 2024. Still, the gas shortage doomsday scenario may be avoided for now, as Europe has successfully filled over 90% of its gas stockpile for the winter. But there are two potential dangers that could screw it all up. First, if Europe doesn't reduce its consumption, it could still run out of gas. The EU member states agreed to reduce gas consumption by 15% from August to next March. But these measures are voluntary, so let's hope all 27 countries stick to the agreement. The International Energy Agency warns that if Europe doesn't cut consumption, gas reserves could drop below adequate levels before Europeans turn off their radiators next spring. That's why some countries are taking measures to lower energy consumption. In France, the president is encouraging government ministers to wear turtlenecks to deal with colder temperatures, hoping that the population follows their example. They're also turning off hot water in public buildings, and Germany is taking similar measures, including shutting off hallway heating in public buildings and turning off advertisement lighting after 10 p.m. Second, if this winter is particularly cold, Europe will burn more gas and could risk running out before the end of winter. The European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecast is warning of a higher than usual chance for cold blasts in November and December. So heating demand could start shrinking Europe's gas reserves as early as next month. If this continues through the winter, it could mean higher prices for Europeans to heat their homes. Low gas supplies could also cause blackouts in some other countries. The UK's National Grid claims that without Russian gas supplies, the UK may face three-hour power cuts this winter. Still, overall this winter will likely be warmer than usual. But long-term weather predictions are not as accurate as short-term forecasts, so it's hard to say for sure. These risks are why the European Commission is proposing a cap on gas profits to reduce energy bills for Europeans. This cap would automatically block gas market transactions above a certain level. They're also pushing for emergency measures like negotiating natural gas prices for the EU as a whole. But if the reserves run out early, Europeans may still have to break out their turtlenecks. Still, there are a few other short-term solutions to reduce European reliance on Russian natural gas. One major factor this year is the increase in liquefied natural gas from countries like Qatar, Nigeria or the United States. Since March, the EU and UK have imported nearly 70% more LNG than last year. This fuel is liquefied at minus 160 degrees Celsius, which allows 600 times more gas to fit on a massive transport ship. Still, the fuel must be warmed up at an LNG facility to be transformed back into usable gas. Importing LNG is a faster solution than building new pipelines to faraway countries. But Europe currently has a limited number of LNG facilities and needs more outside of Western Europe. While the continent has several import terminals under construction, its LNG import capacity isn't up to the current demand. In Spain, 35 LNG ships are currently waiting off the coast to unload at one of the country's six LNG import terminals. Something that could help is floating storage and regasification units, or otherwise known as FSRUs. These LNG transport ships can turn it back into a gas without an on-land import facility. Europe now has over 20 of these ships available or under construction. And France recently installed an FSRU that can import about 5 billion cubic meters of gas per year, a similar capacity to their four land-based LNG import terminals. Germany is also importing four FSRUs and will be able to use two by the end of the year. Still, FSRUs are only meant to be a temporary solution, so Europe's land-based LNG infrastructure needs expansion. 
An LNG isn't even a perfect solution, since competition from China could drive high LNG prices even higher, especially in a cold winter. All of this uncertainty means Europe should prepare for the worst and search for as many solutions as possible. One alternative to gas heating is heat pumps, a much more efficient alternative to gas home heating. But in countries like the Netherlands, heat pumps are sold out until next year. In the long term, the EU is pushing for increased green energy. Germany is taking a major role in this by increasing its commitment to renewable energy, but they faced a major setback due to their reliance on Russian gas. In the first half of 2022, they managed to reduce gas to less than 12% of their electricity generation, but that meant increasing coal to more than 30% from 27% the year before. On top of this, they've had to delay their plan to abandon nuclear energy in 2022 and extend the life of two nuclear power plants until next spring to make up for the drop in gas-powered electricity. On a European level, the EU is working to improve energy connectivity between its member states. We can see this in developments like the recently completed pipeline bringing gas from the Adriatic Sea in Greece to Bulgaria. Also promising is a pipeline to increase gas capacity between France and Spain, which France recently agreed to after years of opposition. Earlier this year, Italy also signed a major gas deal with Algeria, a country already connected to Italy and Spain by pipeline. This is all welcome news, and what's impressive is that Europe has already reduced reliance on Russian gas from more than 40% to less than 8% since the start of the war in Ukraine. On October 21st, EU members backed the idea of gas price caps and joint gas purchases, so it seems like European solidarity is holding for now. And this winter might not be as bad as expected, Still, if the war in Ukraine continues, winter 2023 could be an absolute nightmare scenario, as Europe's gas reserves will likely be depleted by next spring. Considering the lack of any future Russian gas, plus a slow expansion of LNG capacity, it will be much harder for Europe to store enough gas for winter 2023. So we'll have to see how this winter plays out, and let's all hope Russia abandons this war before we all freeze to death. But that's it for this video, thank you for watching, and I'll see See you in the next one.